You've picked a great time to tune into the Homegrown Hunter TV, folks. It's going to be an action packed show. The what? <laughs> the eastern slopes of the Jasper Park boundary, hunting moose with Valid Hill Fingers, my beautiful wife. Stay tuned. You're watching the Homegrown Hunter TV. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, bring it. Welcome to another great season of the Homegrown Hunter. Nice shot. Homegrown Hunter TV is brought to you by Rackstacker, Canada's leader in big game attractants. Campbellford Chrysler, a small town dealer with a huge inventory. Huckabones Equipment, Ottawa Valley's Kubota dealer. Bishop Lake Outdoors, First Place Trailers, Kent Cartridge Canada, Nature of Design Signs and Graphics, and these other fine sponsors. When we first arrived in Alberta, we were accompanied by the owner of Ballot Outfitters. His name is Bryant Botel. He was going to give us a full tour of the area that we'd be hunting the next day. So this guy came, we had him on here, and then obviously it's September 17th, that opening day, and he was gone for three weeks. And of course. Now he's, now he's back again. <laughs> of course. Yeah. That's a pretty picture, too. That's that right now. Look at her. A lot of predators this year. Yeah. The lodge is located about two and a half to three hours west of Edmonton, Alberta, along the foothill mountains of Jasper Provincial Park. It's an absolutely beautiful lodge and a great place to hang out with good friends, have a great time, and of course, get some hunting in. It's something you might want to consider on future hunts after watching this show. The guides Tyrell White and Trail Bancroft had pre-scouted a week prior to me arriving to know exactly where to set me up. I never would have expected for this to happen. Behind the willows is the one that you want. Yeah, okay, exactly. there's a cow up top. It's a cow. Yeah, I see the cow. Oh, that's so cool. Look at the cow. After coming up with a game plan, I decided that I wanted to try and get a closer shot. I started to move in closer towards the bull, trying to find a tree to use as a steady rest. Trail, on the other hand, was going to keep the bull distracted by raking and grunting. That certainly kept him in a standstill position so I can get into place for a shot. Oof. Oof. Welcome back to the Homegrown Hunter TV. I'm about to lay the smack down on the biggest bull I've ever had in my skull. Yes. 
smoked them. Smoked them. Can you get them again? He smoked him. He's stopping. You have to shoot him again. Just lay down. Just lay down. Yeah. Still a win for us. Right? <laughs> I love it. This is awesome. Let's go. Oh, he's too bad. Oh, that's awesome. Good job. Awesome. <laughs> good job. I hit him good on the first shot, man. Oh yeah, you smoked him. Awesome. Yeah, I, honestly, I'm so much happier you use this thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any doubts in that seven, but I know that this thing is accurate. Yeah, I sighted that gun in yesterday at seven mil, and I was banging on, but you know, last action he handed me this six five Creedmoor. What was that? Two hundred yards? Yeah. Two fifty? Two fifty? Two hundred? Two fifty? I hit him, and he stepped away, and I couldn't shoot through the trees again. Yeah. He's laying right over there. He's just starting to lay it. I think I that? seen the cow is what I seen. No, the cow was up on the hill. Yeah, so when we were driving, mm. I was like, what is I th that? I think you did as well. Well, it's not very nice through here. <laughs> yeah, right up there. Right where that tree crosses over. That's my kicker, eh? Yeah, the, the easy part's officially over. First one in the fall. Now you can wear any boots. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, you need to go check out the ball. They don't always come that silver. That's a that silverback. That is one fine move. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He's right well, over there. I actually almost tripped on him. <laughs> this long grass. It's my biggest moose today. I haven't seen paddles like that before. That's awesome. I want you to look first. Awesome. Oh, really? Yeah. You come all the way up here to see this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I might pass out. <laughs> you see him? Right here. <gasps> oh. This is why I wanted you to be with me. That's my biggest ball. She spotted him in the truck. He's an old guy? He's old. You don't get him that silver. That's, That's an old cool. moose. That's a big mature one. You see this? How oh, he's all rounded out down here? Yeah. Oh, he's, he's getting old. He's, old. he's yeah. losing his points, eh? You don't get palms like this too often. Holy. You see you, the one in the cabin? Yeah. I didn't see his, you could see his, uh, well, until Tyrell told us that he was behind these willows. And then, uh, I'm like, what are you talking about? Because I seen the cattle up on top. And then I seen him, and I, I seen the paddles through the willows, and I was like, oh yeah, this is going to happen right now. First day, <laughs> first hour. <clears throat> Beautiful moose. That's cool. <laughs> you spotted him. Well, I think I spotted the cow because I was filming her too. And then you guys were like battles. And I, and I see him like, oh, oh my God. Aw. That is so worth coming to Ballad Outfitters, I'll tell you, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Holy that's cow. awesome. Thank you, Tyrell. Yes, of course. Beautiful. I'm glad to be a part of it. Yeah, that's. Crazy. 46. 46. Yeah. 46. That's 46 inches crazy. And I just asked you a half an hour ago. If the 30 inch bull comes out, <laughs> would you be mad if I shot it? And he's like, not at all. Shoot the first one we can get. Sounds good. Well, I'll take a 46 all day. <laughs> yeah. I, That's cool. I'd love to get a 46 myself, and there he is. Yeah, this is there. gorgeous. Yeah. This is, that is, this is very cool. This is a cool paddle, man. I'm excited that it's a mature moose. 
very nice. Very nice, very respectful animal. Yeah. And the silver is what gets me. Are Honestly, you? that is gorgeous. Yeah. That's a silverback bull moose. He's an old fella. Yeah. Some of the shenanigans here at Valid Outfitting. That's a one pointer. <laughs> look at the left hand line. Look at him rake the bushes. If you think that was wonky, you should take him out of the Yeah, we better get that one out of the environment here. <laughs> Somebody put that thing down. <laughs> What a way to celebrate Rackstacker's 15 year anniversary. And there's not a better person I'd rather spend that with than my wife, Selena. The Tacticam Reveal is the official trail camera of the Rackstacker Elite staff and the Homegrown Hunter TV because they're reliable. If you want to get into accessories, you can check out rackstacker.ca and get them right across Canada. After a few hours work in the field, we ended up getting my moose back to camp and caped out for the wall. Selena and I were going to spend some time traveling from Rob down to a mining town called Cadaman. Along the way, we ended up spotting our first grizzly that we've ever seen. It was pretty cool because she had a couple of cubs along her feeding for the winter time. And now, this week's Cut to the Chase segment, brought to you by Rackstacker. Lane and I were buzzing down the road heading to Cadaman, Alberta to check out the mountains and I seen that this sign actually says scarify which is probably one of the best practices for any forestry because when you're tearing up the ground it uproots a bunch of actual seeds from plants that are natural to this area. It adds diversity for animals like partridge for the ground as the junipers and as well as poplars and elders for the moose to feed on so it's a really good practice and in provinces like New Brunswick and Ontario they're spraying those deciduous plants and it doesn't provide any food, they're just wanting to get that evergreen tree for forestry. But this is a really good way of managing forest. It's nice to see here in Western Alberta. Scarification is a process used by heavy equipment to break up and disturb the soils in order for the natural diversity to come back. It's a fantastic process used in the field to better manage the forest. From the mining of Cadaman, we headed further south to a town called Mountain Park. We were actually accompanied by Trail as he showed us the old history of this town. In this image, you can see that the town was booming with over 1,500 people in the early 1900s. It wasn't until after the World War II when a lot of the town shut down and got closed up because everything was switching from coal over to diesel. And on the way out, we ended up spotting yet another grizzly. From there we headed north into a town called Hinton, Alberta, which of course we ran into more grizzlies. This was pretty cool to see them foraging before the bedtime. Mind you, a little close for comfort. We ended up stopping at a place called High Caliber Sports, a fantastic place to hang out. We met the owners and they're great people. We then headed west into Jasper to enjoy some mountain scenery. It's funny how you spot these sheep along the road because we literally caught them on the road. If you ever get the chance to travel up to Jasper, Alberta, I would highly suggest you go. There's lots to see. The scenic background is absolutely stunning. I really enjoyed my time. I know that Selena was certainly having a good time, especially stopping by the riverside and writing in her name so everybody can see. It turns out that Bryant gave us a call and told us that we were welcome back to fill another tag. That's right, he had an additional tag that he offered to Selena. We were going to try and get her a moose because we still had five days to hunt. With trails calling methods, we were able to spot a bull about six to 700 yards away. Unfortunately, by the time we were trying to put a move on him, he was already on his way out. It was a nice bull, certainly perfect for Selena to take as she's never harvested a bull moose before, but it was a long ways away for us to try and put a foot track on. Unfortunately, it turned out that she was unable to fill her tag that week. We chose to come back in later parts of November before the season ended 
so that she can try and hunt with trail and get her tag filled before the season was over. Stay tuned. We're going to share that with you shortly. Closed captioning has been brought to you by the original portable winch. Compact, lightweight, and can be carried anywhere. It's now the last week in November. We're back at Valid Outfitters with Trail Bancroft to try and fill Selena's moose tag. She's confident in her shooting. It was just a matter of getting a bull in front of her. They were driving down the road and spotted two bull moose, as you can tell by these tracks, and they're trying to get in on a stock to see whether or not they can get a shot off. As they come back to the truck, it just so happens that the younger bull of the two had stepped in on the road. And all of a sudden it just Yeah, they're just both of them there. It's like this huge black sh in the trail. Selena. Yes. Swearing. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> he is huge. Both of them. I know he was huge. But... Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was so cool. And I was about to fall asleep again. Right? I was about to fall asleep again. It's perfect. Go back to sleep there, Selena. Yeah. 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 <laughs> This week's tech tip is brought to you by Banks Outdoors, distributed in Canada by Rackstacker. Hey, did you know that Rackstacker offers a full lineup of moose products? Let me tell you what, it's easy to use, keeps the moose around your area for your camp to be hunting the following fall. We have it in a block form that's slow dissolved throughout the year. We got them in bulk bags because we know those moose are huge animals. They need a lot of it, especially when they get hooked on it. And then we also have it in multiple flavors of liquids that you can pour on top of each of the products. And as of last year, we added the new Rack Stacker Sulfur. And the sulfur you pour around your mineral site and the moose naturally roll in it to get the ticks away from them. It's a great deterrent. Give it a try. Check out rackstacker.ca or go to your local dealer to get yours today. They figured that this was the young bull that they spotted the day before. It just so happens that they heard noises coming from the right, so Selena started to get set up just in case another bull stepped out. And this is what happened. Yes, right now. Don't. I'm sorry. Selena? Yeah. When the moose is standing there, you have to shoot the moose. Yeah. There's nothing going to oh, come back. Man. It's all right. We're going to get a chance. There's moose all over here. This moose is going to come back. Don't do that. Look up here. Look for moose. We're hunting. Look for moose. Another one can pop up at any time. Disappointment for Selena was an understatement. 
However, they were seeing lots of bulls. It was just a matter of time before she had her chance to pull the trigger. Trail had another spot that they were going to go check just in case they had spotted something else. Got her first moose. <laughs> Valid outfitters. Yep. Second last day. We just made it happen. That's right. Thanks, Drew. <laughs> Be easy. Lots of hard work. Awesome. We're gonna do some hard work now and yeah. Get Thank out you, of here. Trail and Valid Outfitters. There you go. Last moose. That's wicked. Last moose. We sealed the deal. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on the Homegrown Hunter TV. I'm your host, Steve Elmy. These guys are moose killing machines. Make sure you check out Valid Outfitters. We got work to do, so I'm gonna let these guys do their thing. Thanks for joining us, until next time. For past episodes, be sure to check out hghtv.ca. Until next time.